On May 8th, one of the worst storms ever to hit Illinois cut through the Carbondale area in what some have described as an inland hurricane with sustained winds of over 80 miles an hour. We hear from those who were there and what the state and utility companies are doing to restore power and clear roadways of massive debris piles. This, the width of this storm, the width of this storm is probably about 12 miles wide uh, or 12, maybe even 15 miles wide. It was not like a tornado where it just rips a path, you know, 200 yards, 300 yards wide and, and goes across. This devastation was flat line winds at registered over 86 mile per hour straight and sustained for a half an hour with gust that broke the meters at 106. Trees that are 80 and 100 years old ripped up by the roots and thrown on houses. When flying over to survey the damage, the wide path of destruction, and then you could see little more severe paths where maybe many tornadoes were in this. I don't think that we have seen, I had never heard of anything like an inland hurricane before, but now I, I know exactly what it is. This, the, this was a devastating storm, devastating, uh, not just from the standpoint of, uh, I think, 67,000 people were without power, but, but the trees, and I mean enormous trees, oak trees, just uprooted and uh, hitting homes. Um, uh, I, I'm just amazed that there were uh, as few injuries. Uh, 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 there was one death, uh, uh, tragically, uh, that was reported in Carbondale. Uh, but when you see the, the, the total destruction um, on a multi-county uh, basis. Um, uh, it, it was just something that uh, most people in Southern Illinois had never seen before. I had just uh, dropped my office manager off at the office and I was uh, headed home for a minute to grab my uh, four-year-old son who had been at my father-in-law's and by the time we got to the house uh, it was a uh, full-scale inland hurricane <laughs> and so um, grabbed my son, ran to the basement and then we uh, stood in the basement and watched the roof of our house fly off and trees fly by. And it was just really hard to, uh, hard to fathom. And my father-in-law, who has uh, been around for many years, kept commenting about how the winds just kept coming and just kept coming. And so we had 80 mile per hour winds gusting to 100 miles per hour. And they went on for, I'd say, 20 minutes, which normally, you know, a couple of minutes and so over. So it really seemed like we were in a hurricane type situation in terms of they were just sustained straight line winds and it just really devastated our area. You know, the gas stations shut down, our grocery stores just shut down, people didn't have no power, you know, people had trees on their houses, uh, tore great big holes in the roof, you know, and it, it was just, it looked like a bomb went off. I mean, it was just, it was just, people don't really realize what it is, because you gotta see it firsthand. Have we have one school down in Jacob in the eastern part, of, or the western part of uh, Jackson County. Uh, the gymnasium was, was blown apart. Uh, the, lucky enough, the children were put in an inner hallway and not in the gymnasium like they normally are. Um, trees that are 80 and 100 years old in Murfreesboro, Carbondale, and all around Jackson County, just literally ripped up by the roots, thrown on houses, uh, many crushed and destroyed houses. We were lucky enough that, that there were, you know, the death toll was minimal, few in injuries. We actually had sustained a lot more injuries of people doing cleanup afterwards. Uh, we are, uh, you know, the, 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 the groups came together, whether it's state help, our locals and volunteers were just tremendous that came together to get the roads cleared quickly and to get the electrical companies out whether it was the co-ops or whether it was Ameren uh, and the crews in and starting to turn everything back up. And then and some of the damage is just going to take years to straighten out. It will take several weeks to get some of the rural areas up to power. Mortis, when we're looking at the damage that's been done in Carbondale, Ameren crews are down there trying to restore power. Uh, what, what can you give us as far as an, an overview of the amount of damage and how this storm in the Carbondale, southern Illinois area compares with uh, other storms you've had to deal with over the years? Well, when this storm hit uh, last Friday, uh, we had winds in excess of 106 miles an hour. The National Weather Service quickly characterized it as an inland hurricane because uh, those winds are of that force. Uh, the damage it did um, uh, was just monumental. It's one of the worst storms, uh, warm weather storms we've ever seen. 68,800 customers were left without power. 
we had broken poles, we had trees that were thrown into power lines, uh, we had roofs off of buildings that were thrown into power lines, uh, there were houses that had been leveled, there's been cars destroyed, roads were impassable, Tree, uh, trees, uh, the root balls on the trees, 12, 14 feet high, that stuff all has to be cleared. So it was just massive destruction uh, of, of a scale that you rarely see. Uh, and this is what happens when you have these very violent straight line winds. Now, how, how does a utility like Ameren plan for something like this? Because it's an act of God. Uh, how, do you, how do you plan the manpower, the materials, the expenses of, of dealing with such uh, acts of God like this? Well, you know, the Army Air Corps uh, had a motto was uh, uh, the difficult uh, we do immediately and the impossible takes a little longer. Uh, and we're always dealing with those types of situations. And, and you plan for the unexpected. We have an emergency operations center, uh, which is based in Decatur. Uh, that takes over. That takes charge as soon as we have a major storm event. We have storm trailers. Um, when we see bad weather coming in, like we do today, uh, everybody who works for the Ameren Illinois Utilities is on alert. Everybody takes on special jobs that uh, uh, they're assigned when we have uh, major outage events. Uh, everybody's ready to roll uh, at the minute that we know we have outages and begin first assessing what we have and then the next task, the biggest task, is, is getting everybody's power back on. Uh, you know, it's, it's been described often as we have a small army of people out there and it does function much like uh, an army would. Uh, you have this problem, it needs to be overcome, and you do it with dedication, uh, perseverance, uh, uh, to get every customer uh, back on. The storm that we saw in uh, southern Illinois, it damaged the infrastructure. Uh, we've replaced hundreds of poles. Probably by the time we're done with this, it's going to be a thousand or so poles that will have to be replaced. We've already put up over 50 miles of wire, of electrical wire, and I know that there's going to be more miles yet that have to be put up. It's those kind of things, when you have that infrastructure that get knocked down, you are in effect rebuilding your system. 